the best way to create wealth in stock market is by investing in great businesses that are actually struggling. Not due to company specific reason, but external reasons like macro environment. Today, one such sector in India is chemical sector. I've been discussing this for a long time that Indian chemical sector has huge potential to create wealth for its shareholder in the next five to 10 years. Although after amazing growth during COVID, this sector has been struggling for more than a year now. And that's where my endeavor is to study great companies with amazing growth prospects that have corrected in last few quarters and are available at decent valuation. And one such company I want to discuss today is Clean Science and Technology. Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and this is my Personal Finance Academy. Now I'm not sure if you remember, but Clean Science had its IPO in July 21 and that's around two years ago. And it has received a phenomenal response with IPO subscribing 94 times and company got listed at 98% premium. So basically the share got doubled on the listing day itself. It did not stop there. Within few months, the share touched a high of 2600, generating nearly three times return from its listing price. However, it's been nearly 18 months since the share price has been consistently falling and currently company is trading at levels of around 1450. Now, Clean Science is a unique company. Unique because it has leadership in the products it manufactures, where it is either number one or number two in the entire world. And company operates on more than 40% margin, which is the highest in the chemical sector. And after my in-depth study of their business, I think that Clean Science is looking very promising at current levels to consider it as part of portfolio for great return in the coming years. Again, this video is not a buy or sell call. It's strictly for educational purpose for long-term investors and not for traders. Because I'm repeating that you can't expect great return from Clean Science in the short term. But long-term potential is immense. So we'll discuss the business model of the company that will help you understand why I'm bullish on this company. And then we'll look at the future growth potential both in short term and long term. And finally, we'll look at the key risk that you must keep in mind before investing your money. All right, let's get started. So Clean Science started its journey in 2006 when Mr. Ashok Boob, an ex-director promoter at Mangalam Drugs and Organics for almost three decades, decided to start his second inning in chemical sector. During that time, his nephew Siddharth Sikchi had returned from Canada with a master's in organic chemistry. And both Mr. Ashok Boob and Siddharth Sikchi did their bachelor's from Institute of Chemical Technology, Mumbai, which is the best institute for chemical engineering in India. So the first observation was Clean Science has a very strong promoter pedigree with a blend of decades of experience and top education background of first generation member and a young blood of second generation with best in class education and decent experience. Now during those days, there were already many chemical factories getting shut down in India due to strict environmental norms and news related to Chinese rivers being polluted due to waste discharge from chemical factories. Hence Clean Science was established with complete focus on sustainable technologies. The promoters started working on interesting catalyst and cleaner technologies that can be used to manufacture specialty chemicals. And that is the biggest differentiation of this company. The name itself says clean science and technology. Please note that it is not easy to master these clean technology processes and hence there are very few people in this segment. But once you master the process, it reduces your cost significantly. In fact, that is the biggest reason why clean science command an operating margin of more than 40%, which is the best in the entire Indian chemical industry. We'll discuss it shortly. For now, let's try to understand their product portfolio and how company generates revenue. So Clean Science started its journey in 2009 by commercializing unique catalytic technology to manufacture MEHQ and UI call. Then in 2011, it commercialized unique catalytic technology to manufacture 4MAP. Then in 2014, it manufactured BH8, then did backward integration, and then it continued to add new products every year. And look at the revenue growth from 1 crore to 19, 120, 241, 419, 512, 685 and 936 crore. That's simply exponential growth. Basically, Clean Science has its presence in three segments. Performance chemical, pharma and agro intermediate and FMCG chemical. The most interesting part is the leadership of Clean Science in each of their product category. Not just in India, but in the entire world. For instance, within Performance Chemical, it manufactured MEHQ that stands for Monomethyl Ether of Hydroquinone and finds usage in diapers and sanitary pads 
as well as precursor for agro industry. Clean Science is number one in this product in the world. The next is BHA that is used as antioxidant in food and feed industry where again company is number one in the world. Then it manufactures TBHQ used as stabilizer in oil industry where it is number two in the world. Next is HALS that stands for hindered amine light stabilizer that find usage in water treatment and UV stabilization in polymer. Company is number one in India. Then within pharma and agro intermediate company manufactured Guacol which is precursor to manufacturing APIs for cup syrup and key raw material to produce vanillin where company is number two in the world. Next is DCC used in antiretroviral where company is again number two in the world. Then you have PBQ which is an intermediate in agrochemical. Then in FMCG chemical it manufactured 4 MAP used in UV blocker in sunscreen where it is number one in the world. And then any soil is used in perfume, pharma, etc. where company is number one in the world. Basically clean science has identified its niche and has become a world leader in majority of its product. In terms of revenue breakup, in latest Q1 of FI24, 67% business is from performance chemical, 19% from pharma and agro intermediate and 13% from FMCG chemical. In terms of revenue by geography, 37% revenue is from India, 19% from US, 13% from Europe, 21% from China and 10% from rest of the world. As compared to last year, China contribution has reduced from 32% to 21%. Now, as mentioned earlier, the biggest moat of clean science is its sustainable business model with clean technology and the unique catalyst it has built to manufacture its product by reducing the waste discharge. For example, due to this catalyst, the raw material for MEHQ is $2 versus $5 for other companies. This is the biggest reason for greater than 40% operating margin for the company and hence high profitability. Today, company has around 1300 employees out of which they have a team of 90 scientists that are involved in innovation with R&D and manufacture niche product with global leadership. Clean Science focus on innovation and R&D can be gauged from the fact that in 2018, company had 22 scientists and in 2023, it has 90 scientists with four independent R&D labs. And this focus on innovation is the biggest moat of the company that resulted in in being number one or number two in the entire world in its product category. As a result, company's financials have grown at a very high rate. Its revenues have grown from 241 crore in FI18 to 393 crore, 419 crore, 512, 685 and 936 crore in FI23. Look at the consistency in the growth. And then look at the margins from 31% to 35, 44, 51. Of course, this was due to COVID, but still the margins are consistently above 40%. And its net profits have grown from 49 crore to 98, 140, 198, 228, 295 in FI23. Again, consistently high growth. Company also generates high cash from operation that is growing every year. In fact, company has very high profitability with return on equity greater than 30% and return on capital employed greater than 40%. It's a completely debt-free company. So all the financial looks super strong. Although in latest Q1 result, its sales are down 20% year on year and net profits are down 6% year on year due to certain challenge in the near term that we will discuss shortly. Now currently company has three manufacturing units in Maharashtra. First unit has seven plants, second unit has four plants and third unit has five plants. On leadership, Clean Science MD is Mr. Ashok Boob with nearly three decades of experience in the sector. He did his chemical engineering from ICT Mumbai. Then Krishna Boob is the ED. He has done his bachelor's in pharmacy. He is the brother of Ashok Boob. Then Siddharth Sikchi is again executive director and look after marketing and R&D. He is the nephew of Ashok Boob. He has 17 years of experience and has done his bachelor's from ICT Mumbai and master's in organic chemistry from Canada. Then Parth Maheshwari is the president. He is the son of Ashok Boob. He has 7 years of experience and has done bachelor's in chemical engineering from Pune and MBA from US. Basically clean science is run by first and second generation member of the family with mix of ample experience and top education. Company also has highly experienced team of board of director. Now that we have discussed the business, let's have a look at the company's future growth plan and reason for sharp correction in last 18 months. When Clean Science launched its IPO in FI22, it was the golden phase of Indian chemical sector. There were supply chain issues as China was struggling with lockdowns and environmental concern and there was high demand for chemical post-COVID recovery. Hence, the end product prices were increasing. Due to the rising prices, companies were stocking up their inventory 
and that resulted in high volumes and sales for clean signs. And of course, 2122 was a bull market euphoria and hence clean signs share price immediately tripled from its IPO level of 900 to touch a peak of 2600 by January 22. At its peak, clean sign touched a PE of 138. However, in FR23, the demand started falling and supply chain got stable. As a result, the end product prices started falling. Now, in declining price environment, companies tend to destock their inventory. That has resulted in lower volume and lower sales for the clean science business. Management in its con call mentioned that to summarize, last year was a seller's market, while current year is a buyer's market. As a result, clean science share price has tanked from highs of 2600 to current levels of 1450. Today, its market cap is at around 15,000 crore and a PE is at around 53, which looks much better in terms of valuation considering its leadership and high growth rate. However, in the near term, I don't expect a sharp uptick in share price, mainly because management has already clarified that Q2 of FI24 would remain subdued due to lower demand and destocking, and it might also extend to Q3. So next one to two quarters can remain subdued. And hopefully from Q4, there should be good recovery. Then another problem was due to low demand for their pharma product, Guacol, which goes into cup syrup. So basically what happened is in Indonesia and Iraq, where cup syrup suppliers are from India, had health issues on citizens of those countries. Hence, there were some regulations that impacted Indian suppliers of cup syrup and that impacted the demand for Guacol. Now today, one major problem that every Indian chemical company is facing is China dumping their product at very low cost. And I also had the same question. So on that, management has clarified that this current slowdown in revenue and profit is mainly due to slowdown in demand and destocking. Chinese competition has got nothing to do with slowdown. In fact, they said that there are no producers for MEHQ and BHA in China. Now, as far as long-term prospects are concerned, Indian chemical sector has a huge opportunity due to global companies reducing their dependency from China and creating alternative supply chain. And Clean Science has a strong moat in its business with focus on innovation. Companies already coming up with new facility of HALS in Q4 that would eventually ramp up in coming years with major revenue coming from H2 of FI25 onwards. Since company is a process innovator, I expect it to continue to launch unique products in its niche market that would result in sustainable growth. So for me, this correction due to temporary shutdown is a great opportunity to consider adding clean signs in a systematic manner over the next three to six months. Any dip from current levels of 1400 will only make the share price more attractive. Yes, share price might not jump immediately, but FI25 should see much better performance in terms of business and that should be reflected in company share price. And hence, I said that it's only for long term prospect, not for short term. Now, if you look at the shareholding pattern, companies promoters were holding 78.5% stake in the company that got reduced to 75%. It's only because of regulation from RBI where promoters have to reduce their shareholding to below 75% within three years of listing. But this is completely absorbed by FIs and DIs that increase their stake from 3.9 to 5.8 and 4.7 to 6.4 percent. And public hold only 12.7 percent stake in the company. That too, nearly 5 percent is with HNIs or investment firms. So retail investors have just 7 percent stake in the company, which is a great sign. So I hope you got a good picture of Clean Science future prospects. Now, last piece is your key risk. So first risk is dependence on innovation and R&D. Company's biggest strength is its unique catalytic process that reduces its manufacturing cost and gives it a niche with leadership in the world. But any failure to innovate in the future can significantly impact company's business. All the company has 90 scientists working on innovation. But please note that their catalytic process are not patented. While management has mentioned that it's not easy to build their processes and products, it's also not impossible. So that's risk number one. Then second risk is client concentration risk. Since clean science is in B2B business, nearly 40 to 45% revenue come from their top 10 customers. But hence, any loss of business from its top client can significantly impact its business. And then third risk is dependence on end industry. Clean science manufacture products that are further used in various industries. So ultimately, company's growth is also dependent on the growth of end industry. For instance, recently, the slowdown in demand from end industry has impacted company's growth. So in this video, we discussed the business of clean science and technology. 
company has a very strong leadership team that has created a niche in the segment with global leadership via innovation. Financially, Clean Science has amazing growth in the past with very high profitability and company has zero debt. The future prospects also looks great and company is already expanding its manufacturing. Although there will be pressure on the business for next one to two quarters and its share price is already corrected around 45% from its peak and looking decent at current levels. Any further correction will only make the stock more attractive. So it can be a great opportunity to consider accumulating clean signs in a systematic manner over the next three to six months. Now tell me in the comments, which chemical stock do you hold in your portfolio? And what is your take on clean signs? If you find this video useful, do share it with your friends. And for more such informative content, you can consider subscribing to this channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.